Good morning, everybody. Pastor Rick here, Broadman Baptist Church. This is the Broadman Word for November 19th, 2021. And uh, we're going to be talking about the stain today. But first order of business, I want to wish my wife Shannon, my beautiful wife Shannon, uh, a wonderful anniversary for an amazing 27 years of marriage. Who knew uh, so long ago that we would um, be together for so long and looking together uh, to be together for much, much longer. So anyway, I love you, honey, and thanks for a wonderful ride. All right, um, the stain, you know, we interact with people all the time, and there can be nothing more angering than um, a religious person uh, telling somebody why they don't measure up or um, telling somebody about your ideas even earnestly but in the process, making it known that their ideas aren't correct. Uh, we find us ourselves in a difficult situation because as followers of Jesus from John 14, 6, uh, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So um, that door is wide open, but it is a narrow door. And expressing that with uh, the love and conviction that could change someone else's heart or at least give them information so that they can um, investigate God on their own and come to uh, a relationship with Him that way uh, is difficult because uh, the world isn't uh, like that at all. There's um, variations A, B, C through Z sometimes even. And here we come along trying to tell everybody, no, that's not correct. There is only one way. So um, we have to stick to that. One, it's true. Two, um, it is the express will of God, which makes it true. So the peripheral things, the non-essentials the non is where we can probably make a, a bigger difference. Uh, those things kind of tend to put a stain on our reputation sometimes. They could also potentially limit our influence uh, because we can be and should be so confident in our answer as the way and the truth um, that we could come off sound, sounding closed-minded or judgmental, uh, even closed-hearted. And we could sometimes see, be seen as ending conversations and not beginning them. And of, all over non-essentials uh, that aren't going to send anybody to heaven or hell. So, if you've ever been in a situation uh, where you've got a friend and you're having a conversation about religious matters... Um, be sure that you're not coming off as self-righteous or uh, that you are discounting their ideas. While you may intend it for their good and for it to not be personal, the objections you have against what they're saying or about what they're saying, it is personal. If you think about it, ideas are owned by people. And when you don't embrace somebody else's idea then you express your ideas on top of that as the right ones, uh, you're putting their ideas down. Or at least it can be perceived that way. And when you put down their ideas, you could come off as self-righteous. So what do you do? How do we handle this? Um, how do we express the truth that we know, God's truth, and how do we express it uh, in a way that it will be reconciling and not off-putting and uh, not self-righteous. How do we express the ideas that we have, the truth that we know, in a manner with which it will be received? Number one, make sure that there's love in your heart. If it doesn't come from a place of love, what you're doing, um, then it's not going to work um, because God is love, and if you don't operate from a place of love of God and the individual that you're speaking to, then it's not going to work. Um, your words will fall flat. Then, uh, number two, you wouldn't think through how the listener is going to hear what you're about to say. There's a million different ways to say the same thing. And unfortunately, uh, the way that you initially might want to say it might also be the wrong way um, for that individual in that situation or maybe both. So what you have to do is make sure that you've thought through um, how what you're going to say is going to be perceived, how it's going to be heard by the person who's going to listen to it. And then lastly, 
choose your words carefully. Offer solutions, offer ideas, but don't insist on them. Um, you're not going to be able to save anybody. Uh, that's God's job. Your job is to lead them uh, to the cross where they can then have that encounter on their own, just like you did. That's not going to happen if you have off-putting self-righteous words, or if you don't even intend it that way, but you come off that way anyway. That's the appearance. The effect is the same. Uh, it's Your ministry uh, is not going to work that way. So choose your words carefully and offer suggestions, offer ideas, offer alternatives um, instead of uh, proclamations uh, and Pharisaic rules. So listen, um, the question, will you work to avoid communicating from a place of self-righteousness or at least one that appears that way? I hope so. I hope you uh, take that to heart. Listen, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful day in the Lord. Uh, it is going to be an amazing time uh, that we live in because of all the opportunities, challenges for sure. But where there's challenges, there's opportunities. And let God lead you to those opportunities so that you do have the opportunity um, within yourself and for others to speak the gospel in truth and love. And then watch God be God. Take care. We'll see you next time.